Genuine question, what do you think of people who are just naturally loners and hermits? I'm not gonna lie, I don't believe that shit. I think that being a loner is always, like, at an individual level, a psychological failure, and at a social level, a, like, policy failure. Everyone wants connections to some extent, and every time you hear about people who don't, it's because they, like, I don't know, lost their wife in the war and want to go live out in the mountains or whatever. It's always a response to, like, trauma or some shit. In reality, people are literally biologically designed to be varying levels of social. I'm not saying everyone needs to, like go out there and go to like a dance club every night or whatever but um the the state like i don't i don't want people to like normalize the weird blend of social enemy and anxiety that means that a lot of you mother are legit spending like a week holed up in your apartment not talking to anyone and you think like oh well i kind of like being alone no you don't no you off with that come on don't don't normalize the disease don't wake up and look at your surroundings and rather than critique them go like no actually i'm fine with this off you just don't like dealing with the anxiety and trouble of like forming new relationships you dude fuck you dude you don't me i go outside I engage with people man you're the one who's costing yourself like precious seconds of a finite life you're gonna die one day you want to count your friends on the bed you can like being alone. I like being alone too, but I like being alone for like periods of recharging in between being sociable with others. I like that. I like that engagement. A lot of people, they, they, they try to convince themselves the disease ain't there, you know? They're laying there thinking like, actually this weird sickening feeling of, of you know, like uh, unsatisf or non-satisfaction that I have, that's actually like me being normal. Like that's like a normal thing that I feel. Come on, treat yourself a little bit. Vosh, you pay your friends to live with you? Shut up. That's a weird way of saying that I can afford to provide, like, my close friends a life free of financial burdens. But, you know, however however you prefer. What a shitty thing to say. It's okay. It, it, intended as an attack against me, uh, it is a blowback, all right? It attacks, in fact, them because they cannot perceive uh, the level of mutual care that I live with day to day. It's cope, man. People who are like, yeah, man, I actually like being alone. It's cope. It's cope. Vosh, you're so right. I used to call myself a loner until I realized it was cope because I was too scared to overcome my social anxiety. That's what I'm talking about, man. That's what I'm talking about. The first and most difficult step is recognizing the problem. I didn't realize how much I cared about other people until I had the mental breakdown realizing I'd be alone. Yeah, man. I mean, look, we're all born alone and we all die alone, okay? But you get to fill the intervening period, all right? I just don't like the fact that society right now is built in such a way that it's possible to basically never interact with people. Order your groceries, or order your deliverables, work uh, at a distance, you know, whatever. And then people, like, they get it in their head, like, oh, yeah, the anxiety that I feel at the thought of making new connections is not, in fact, just a small barrier for me to overcome. It's actually, like, my body telling me I don't like or want those things and that's just not true man that's not true you gotta believe in yourself yeah exactly big lol that's fine well vosh what if you genuinely don't like being around other people then you wouldn't be in this chat right now because this is also a form of social interaction i don't believe in that shit you're watching a live streamer right now you clearly care at some level about the ability to engage socially with others you just prompted a response from me you added me in chat your message came up blue you're talking to me right now and that's stretching it no it's not the only thing that separates live streaming as a distinct form of media from many others available to you right now is the immediate interactivity, the community, all right? Now, a proper community, it is not. You mother still need to get out there and, like, socialize, okay? But it is something, more so than you'd get from, like, a television. If you're here watching this, if you're here chatting, moreover, you have to care about that to some extent. Otherwise, why this? Why not just any YouTube video? Do you really think I'm as moment-for-moment moment entertaining as any other possible video out there? You look at live streams, things narrow a little bit. And you look at my personality, well, why do you care about that? You think I, in particular, am funny? You like the live rapport, the engagement? You care about socializing. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's actually normal. That's good. But it's hard. Yeah, well, life is hard. And you die anyway, eventually, you know? What, you want to do nothing difficult in the meantime? I'm not speaking about introversion, Mesa Yamada. Though, by the way, I will say, we should have never invented the terms extrovert and introvert. I'm going to hit you because I bet you 98% of the people watching right now self-define as introverts. I'm going to hit you with some truth. Everyone does because everyone wants alone time to recharge uh and everyone burns out their battery when engaging with other people publicly everyone does literally all humans e e the, the introvert extrovert distinction was something created by introverts to explain away why some people have more social energy than them they look up at the extroverts and they're like oh they must be a different kind of person no they're not they're the same kind of person as you 
They just have a little bit more social energy or maybe a little bit more tolerance for loud noises or whatever the f you know? Like, it's not, people, they love, people love self-categorizing. People love putting themselves into little boxes to explain away or justify what they are or why they are the way they are. People have to stop doing that, man. You can't do that, okay? It doesn't help you. It doesn't make you, it doesn't make you a whole person, you know? You're giving yourself an excuse to write off certain elements uh, of your identity, to think like, oh, well, I'm not that kind of person. Why can't I go out to the club and do X or Y? Why can't I go to that beach party or the bonfire? Well, it's because I'm an introvert, so I'm not that kind of person. That. You can do whatever the hell you want. Am I the kind of person to do X? Am I the kind of person to do Y? Wrong. Boring. Irrelevant. Do you want it? That's what matters. Paul made your point. Many such cases. Sometimes do a segment on those god-awful Myers-Briggs personality tests and how some people live off those things. Yeah, horoscopes for men, you call them. Those things don't mean anything. You can get different answers based on how your mood is at any point in time. There is no personality test that you can take that will tell you what kind of person you are. You are not a, like, type. There is no such thing as a type of person. Not really. You're an ephemeral, ever-changing collection of attributes that shifts. We don't even have a scientific definition of what consciousness is. There is no understand. We don't know why you fall asleep and wake up and have a continuity of experience from A to B. You think we know how to categorize a person based on their personality? Are you insane? We have no idea what you are. You don't have any idea what you are. Just do what you want, man. And pay your taxes, okay? We need that shit for, like, wheelchair ramps, okay? This mother has the IQ of a tomato. And I don't even know what he wants. I think he wants to be let down. He's been begging for attention, clawing in my chair and yelling. Does he want tub water? Do you want... You want... You want water? Here. He wanted to swipe a tub water, at the very least. All right, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Uh, Foucault was right on psychology and medicalization, not necessarily on the age of consent. Uh, stop putting yourself into boxes. Stop categorizing. You are not a loner. You are a person who's currently enjoying alone time. You are not an ENTP or whatever the f You're somebody who can, like, memorize uh, anime OPs and play it out in your head while, like, walking to the beat of the song that's in your head, okay? You, like, don't stop obsessing over the f D -d -d whatever the f okay any like lines you can build around your character that determine whether or not you're capable of doing x or y yeah you're not bisexual you just like pokemon exactly that's everyone exactly isn't myers briggs racist anyway everything that i don't like is racist mbti marketing schemes have gotten so bad especially in the east it's a cultural predisposition towards institutional like submissiveness Taoism or whatever Aren't uh, don't can't uh, don't they think your blood type means shit in Japan? It's crazy. At least we're individualistic enough over here in the West to not believe in that shit. Taoism is Chinese. Yeah, that's true. But they got that problem in their own way, don't they? Yeah, there's no such thing as transgender. You just like Celeste, exactly. What about horoscopes? Bad. You forgot astrology? Bad. There, I did it. There's no such thing as lesbianism. You just like Utena. Nice try, but uh, your average lesbian is um. Not old enough to have watched uh, Revolutionary Girl Utena. I have, because I'm a real G. Uh, and I, I, I prefer to love... I love women so much that I love them holistically, okay? Me analyzing lesbian media to maximize my appreciation of women. I used to call myself an introvert, but did play a lot of games. I made an active effort to meet up with the people I often game with IRL and have made very good friends. I will admit it's probably easier in the EU, but it made me a much better adjusted person. Mm-hmm. Yep. Nobody, I, I promise you, people who self this okay, I'm going to hit you with the, you know, because we got chat mostly on my side now. Now it's time for me to, like, get some people mad again, okay? Most people who call themselves loners are losers. Let's be real here, okay? People who have accepted and, like, internalized and identified with the prospect of being alone apart from other people, usually not very well adjusted. I'm just going to say it, folks, okay? I've met with these so-called loners. There's nothing innate about this, by the way. There's nothing, like, innately making you uh like that you can improve you just have to try is the thing you know nothing in life comes easy nobody's innately good at anything you know it's like all those guys who think sigma male is a real thing you know oh yeah man i'm an alpha but i have no social skills so i'm like a sigma yeah I have extreme sensitivity to light and sound. It's a medical issue. I avoid big crowds of people in social settings because of it. And people always tell me that equals introvert, even though I do like... Yeah, see, snails are... That's also a thing that bothers me, right? 
because that's that's the problem as approached from the other end. You dislike some elements of being social publicly because they tend to be like concurrent with the 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 lights and the sound and what have you. But you're not opposed to the socializing element of it, which just means that for you the the enjoyment of socializing is conditional. But that doesn't mean you don't like it. You know, people essentialize too much. The only thing you guys essentially are is annoying. Hello, Artemy. Let me turn the water off. Artemy is right here absorbing the blue light. I hate how loud most restaurants are. Yeah, it used to be that, like, only certain types of restaurants were loud. It used to be that only some types of restaurants were loud and others were expected to be quiet, but then restaurants realized, oh, wait, it's actually way the cheaper and we can get more seats filled with butts if we just crowd everyone in together and we gaslight everyone into believing that the innate state of a restaurant is loud unless you're getting some fancy French shit, you know? Um, Diners should be loud. There should be there should be some restaurants you expect to be loud and some restaurants you expect to be quiet. Okay, here's my take, all right? Cafes should be quiet. It's in the morning, you're having your little uh your little your little baked good and coffee. You know, maybe you're like got a laptop or reading or whatever. Diners should be loud. Diners are loud and rowdy. You know, you order your burger. It's eight bucks. You get it in like four minutes. It's, you know, mid, but you're you're there. You're banging. They got the music. You know, you got like a Johnny Rocket style jukebox with a nickel. Yeah, go for it. You know, that rules. We don't have diners. It's a classic American experience. Thank you. You know, but if you're the thing that bothers me is when you go to like a nice uh, you know, like, um, I don't know, contemporary American restaurant, the kind of place that has like an $18 burger and you go there and the vibes should be quiet because it's dark in there, but it's loud as shit. If I'm paying $18 for a burger, I want to be able to hear a conversation with the people that I'm at the table with, you know, like, there, I, I feel like we have a missing middle kind of situation where the only place you can go to get a quiet, like, proper meal is, like, a 30 or $40 entree at, like, a French restaurant or something. What's the difference between essentialization and generalization? Essentialization is when you, um, you say that, like, an attribute or characteristic of a person or a group is innate. That it is just the way that it is. That it is fundamental to them. Generalization is just the natural human... I suppose both of them are natural cognitive biases, though I would argue that essentialization always gets in the way of good analysis. Generalization is meant to be a shortcut that can be helpful, like, uh, you know... In, when when making like broader statements, for example, if I said something like Hillary Clinton's attitude did not play well with Appalachian and Midwestern voters because she came across as like a coastal elite, that would be a generalization of the attributes of the Midwesterner or the Appalachian. But that generalization would serve the analysis. It would be a necessary generalization to arrive at that conclusion. I can't really like individually assess the opinions of tens of millions of people uh, to make that point. Uh, but the essentialist argument would be, yeah, people from the Midwest or Appalachia are just like that. They're a different kind of people, um, which would be wrong, of course. I think that essentialization is always bad uh, and generalization can be very, very useful. Though, of course, it can be bad. Like, you know, has to be used well. Mexican restaurants should be loud because Mexican food is loud. Name a quiet food, sushi. Japanese restaurants usually are pretty quiet, actually. Unless it's one of those conveyor belt sushi bars, because once you get to like, the conveyor belt gives it the kind of like rowdy diner feel. Like I would say that's like a diner-esque attribute, you know, because you're up there at the bar and you're just sort of pulling stuff off the, the conveyor belt, you know? Or those, those ramen shops where they have like five stools at a booth, you know what I mean? They have like the, the plastic lining that blocks out the, the diners from the, the street. And then they, they go in it and they sit down and they yum, 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 you know? Yeah, the street grills.